Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. You join me today once again with the new addition, my Mark 7 Golf R. I tell you what, it's so good to have one of these cars back in my ownership and back on the channel on a regular basis. Now, basically what we're gonna be doing in today's video is a bit of a follow on from the reveal video and giving you guys a run through of everything which is wrong with this car. As you may remember from the reveal video, at the time of me purchasing it, this was the cheapest car advertised in the UK. Now, I did actually get quite lucky timings wise because generally this car is in pretty much a perfect spec and also it's not a categorized car. So it's never been in an accident as far as I'm aware, but there are still quite a few bits on the car which aren't perfect and do need some attention. So basically what we're gonna be doing is going through all of those before going out for a nice drive because I haven't had this car long and I've probably done about 200 miles on it, but any excuse to go for a drive in this thing because it is just so much fun and there's plenty more miles to be done in this car, um, well, for the foreseeable future. Um, so yeah, we'll have a run through, go through everything which is wrong with it and then go for a nice little drive. So for those of you who missed the recent reveal video of this car, please let me introduce you to my new Mark 7 Golf R, a car which I've wanted to kind of buy back into my ownership for an awfully long time. Of course, going alongside my BMW M140i and the Mark 5 Golf GTI. As you can see, it's a three door Mark 7, so the pre-face lift finished in lapis blue with the 19 inch Pretoria alloys. And actually that does follow me on nicely to the first issue with this car. Now I was very, very lucky to buy a car with the upgraded wheels included in the price, but they are in a bit of a sorry state. Pretty much all of them uh, are curbed or damaged or corroded in some instances. You can see down here, look. So I think basically they've been done in the past, but really not very well. And maybe some acidic wheel cleaners have been used whilst cleaning the car by the previous owner. And it's basically, well, made them a bit of a mess. <laughs> Now I do actually really like the color of these. On my previous Golf R, I had gloss black Pretorias. On this, it's like a satin gray kind of color. And they do actually have some decent tires, which were replaced on the car before I bought it. But definitely, whether I keep these wheels or not, in fact, I'll let you into a little secret. These will be going, so if you want some Pretorias, let me know, because they will be for sale. I will be uh, refurbing them, just so they're tip top. But yeah, you can see down there, really not very nice. And in fact, on the fronts, they're even worse. In fact, also on the fronts, we are missing the center caps. Nice bit of curbing on there. This car was a London car before, so the kind of stuff which you would expect. But again, much of the same on the fronts. A lot of corrosion pickling up. And in fact, when the tires were replaced, the people who replaced them did make a bit of a meal out of changing the weights. Look at the state of that in there. But yeah, I mean, the wheels overall are really nice. It goes really nicely with the lapis blue and actually kind of does with the brushed uh, mirror covers. But yeah, just a little thing. Wheels do definitely need doing, but ultimately I will be changing them out for some upgraded ones in the future. Sticking with the spec of the car briefly with regards to the paint, like I mentioned, of course, finished in lapis blue and being a fairly old car now, 64 plate 2014 with 81,000 miles on the clock, um, it would have had some paint. Now, like I mentioned in the intro, this car, as I'm aware, um, has not been in any accidents, although it has had some bodywork in its time. Um, of course, being quite a high mileage car as well, you also have quite a few stone chips on the front, although I'm pretty sure the front hand has been painted in its time, but just quite a comical thing. Anyone fancy some uh, some rusty stone chips? Because I've got plenty of them. <laughs> I need to get myself a lapis blue touch-up pen to get rid of the worst of them. But one thing which did alert me was in fact the amount of lacquer peel on the front. And actually there is lacquer peel all over the car. Well, I wouldn't say all over, but on some other panels, but I'll show you here first. See that there? That's a bit of lacquer peel and also probably the worst bit just down there. Now that's probably mainly down to, um, I guess some stone chips just taking off the clear coat, but could also be down to poor application uh, and poor bodywork basically. And now the other bit is actually down here on the near side rear quarter, just 
down there, see the little reflection. Something which isn't the end of the world, but does basically mean that this quarter, in fact, the whole side has been painted. And in fact, I'm pretty sure I know exactly what happened. If we kind of kneel down here, I'm gonna try and use some of the reflection as much as I can, but you can almost see a little bit of filler work which has been done, some slight creases in the arch. So basically, um, the car's had a bit of a knock, maybe, I don't know, turned a corner too soon and hit a post or something like that. Um, but also you can see just how peely the paint is as well. Now, VW Audi Group cars do generally um, have quite a lot of orange peel from factory, but that is kind of uh, something which all of them have. So any extra peel, shall we say, is uh, basically down to any bodywork repairs which have been done. In fact, if we look up here, you see that at all? Just very peely, especially kind of here. So the door's been done. I'm not sure if the wing has been done, but the quarter has been done as well. And I'm gonna struggle to kind of portray that. Uh, but hopefully you can pick it up on the screen. Now actually some more signs which shows that there has been bodywork done to this side. If we just open up the passenger door, excuse all of my camera stuff everywhere, we can see just down here, the kind of masking edge that the body shop used. See that? And also if I kind of come down here, let, listen to this. Now that I think is kind of overspray, I guess. Um, but also you can see just the difference between what this in here would be original, and this is kind of like a mix between overspray and also just like a hard edge, I think they call it. Uh, but shout out to Mike from Connings, um, who also worked on my Golf GTI, a good friend of mine. I showed him the car and he kind of pointed that out. And he also pointed out quite a lot of underspray in there. See that, how it's just a lighter color? And also down quite bad on the front, you're probably not really gonna pick that up very well up to overlay a clip, but basically you can just see the lighter shade of blue where basically there just isn't enough paint um, on that section. Um, but yeah, quite funny really. <laughs> With regards to maintenance, the service history on this car is actually pretty good. I think I've mentioned it before, but this car has full VW main dealer service history. So basically anything that could have been done has been done. And that is kind of what I mean by <laughs> I got very lucky with this particular car because normally cheapest examples of cars online have never been serviced, have been rebuilt, uh, categorized and everything but for this i did get very very lucky indeed it is also worth noting that this car is completely stock i was speaking on the phone with the previous owner and he did actually have plans to take this car to stage two which is pretty cool but of course um, his circumstances changed um, and so he had to kind of get rid of the car a little bit before he wanted to but yeah the car is completely stock all uh, all ready for a, a bit of a well it's a blank canvas really for <laughs> for my plans which i've got for the car but yeah full main dealer service history which is really good although there is some maintenance that does still need to be done which we kind of agreed on um, as part of the sale in fact i will hop in and show you that right now so before we do hop in sorry i'm getting a little bit sidetracked when i picked up the car i did notice this little sticker here so nick from auto communications has actually previously worked on this car there is a ghost immobilizer on it and coincidentally nick from auto communications has done it he did the, the work on my 140 um so yeah awesome stuff and nick if you're watching you're probably not you're a busy man um then shout out to yourself got a nice ghost on it already anyway hopping on board all in all the interior is pretty clean we have the uh, cloth seats in this car and cloth generally does do a really really good job of hiding anywhere the bolsters are not too bad no rips, tears or anything. If these were leathers, I think it would be uh, a different story. Of course, we've got the gray Alcantara with the cloth uh, central sections. Um, but yeah, all is pretty tidy in here, really. So if I do hop in, um, before we get to the maintenance, which I'll get to, the only thing that is kind of wrong with the interior is this little tray down here. It opens, closes, and kind of holds itself fine. Um, but see that down there? A few little cracks, and it is, how do I do it? It's a bit loose, so something's gone on there, but overall, it's pretty tidy, really. However, if I grab the key and actually close the door, because it's absolutely freezing today, if I just pop on the ignition quick, we will see that, wait for it, 
there we go. It is due a service. Now this was a big part of actually me getting a good deal on the car. Um, basically I knocked the owner down uh, the price of a service. It's due a major service, which I think, don't quote me if I'm wrong, uh, was about 500 pounds. So I got pretty much that amount off the car when I bought it. I paid just over 13,000 pounds for the car. For those of you wondering, as you can see, 81,403 miles on the car so far. But yeah, I mean, I've, like I said, I've done about 200 of those. Absolutely loving it. Car is still in its stock state, but for not much longer, of course. We do have the manual. So, so happy to have a manual uh, in my lineup now. But generally, like I said, the interior is pretty clean. Sorry, excuse all the rain that's on the lens. Um, but yeah, I think what we'll do, we'll put the bonnet down and I think get this car fully started up because pretty much that is it that is wrong with the car. A few little, um, little things really, cosmetic bits, any mechanical bits, but generally the car is pretty tidy. And like I mentioned, I am absolutely loving taking this thing at four drive. I've covered probably about 200 miles in it, but I think we need to do a few more. So like I said, we'll pop the bonnet down, go for a drive before wrapping up the video. Racking up those miles, racking up those miles. In fact, similar to the Golf GTI, we're on the road to 100,000 miles. So we're currently on about well, 81,404. So we've still got a fair old way. The GTI is now on 93,000. So we're doing a fair old few miles in that. But I mean, summarizing everything which I've kind of gone over, I'm sure you agree. There's nothing really major which is wrong with this car yet. <laughs> um, and to be honest, I think a large um, reason as to why this car is cheap is actually just down to the, the base spec as it is. I mean, it's a Mark 7, so of course, that's one of the price brackets. It's a manual as well. The manuals tend to go um, for a little bit less than the DSG. <laughs> um, and also just the, the amount of options which are on the car anyway, which I'll tell you, aren't very many. In fact, I'm pretty sure the Pretorias are like the only option which are on this car. We don't have heated seats. We don't have the upgraded sound system. We have the standard seats. Um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I'm not fussed either way. It's a great car. We've got everything which I need, i.e. a Golf R and a manual gearbox. Anything else is an extra. And it's just so good, so good. Just find yourself really unnecessarily going through the gears, heel and towing, <laughs> and just driving like a loony, but it's what a manual makes you do. <laughs> it's unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. And I cannot wait for all of the videos which I've got planned with this car. I mean, this is only the second video which I've uploaded of this car. And in fact, this video which I'm filming right now is even before the car is revealed. The car is being revealed in literally like two hours. It's half four uh, at the moment. The video goes live at six. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I'm rambling on a little bit. I'm pretty sure we've, uh, we've covered everything. Um, and yeah, I mean, let me know what you think. Have I bought a dog? Have I bought a decent car? I think it's a decent car. It's, to be honest, it's not perfect, but you can't imagine a car which for a Golf R is quite cheap. You can't imagine for it to be perfect. Um, it's not my idea to make it perfect, but it's my idea to kind of make it, make it awesome. And that's definitely what we're gonna do. But anyway, I think for now, that's gonna wrap things up for me. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures still to come.